morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just uh, came all the way from Israel via Dubai, and I stopped in Washington, D.C. I was there. I saw it all. Yes. And uh, I feel like a train just, just drove right over me uh, with all that uh, nonsense that is being played on media right now. Uh, but I want to take you back to where I came from because the, the tomb is still empty in Jerusalem. Yeah. <laughs> just to bring it back to what matters because uh, I, it entertained me that uh, you just talked about this youth event on January 30th. And we are on January 10th right now, and we're already running out of air. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just on, on December 30th, the Lord moved me to just write a tweet. On, if, he, if you don't know Jesus, you better, you yeah. better make sure you know him before the, this new year enters, because 2021 will make 2020 look like a picnic. Yeah. And uh, do you feel so already? Yeah. Yes, because that's the, that's the case. And uh, today's message is reaching the finish line. And uh, I, 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 I hope you understand that this whole life that we live is, is a long race. Yeah. But there are a lot of races all around us, regardless of what we go through in our life. There are other races, and it's our choice to be part of them or not. In fact, right now in America, as we speak right now, there are two races. There is a race to throw your president out, and there is a race to prove them wrong and to stay. And these two trains are fast driving train, and there's going to be, you know what's going to happen, exactly. But is that your race? No. Okay, so we're going to try and understand uh, which is the one that matters the most. Yeah. What is the race that matters the most? Reaching the finish line. I, I started working on this message at the end of 2020 because it was symbolic. You know, we're reaching the end of one of the most unusual years in everybody's life. And uh, we all remember how it all started. And if anything can be characterizing 2020 is that the whole world went throughout the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. For the first time ever yeah. since probably the Tower of Babel, the whole planet is going through something together. Right. Think about it. Even in World War I, when they were fighting in one part of the world, they were singing and dancing in another part of the world. World War II, do you think that while they were shooting in Japan or in Pearl Harbor and all of that, do you think in Argentina they were taking cover? No. You, you understand? The world never, ever had something like this before. We are now, every country on planet Earth, even I think COVID made it to Antarctica. No. I mean, just to a few weeks ago. Wow. Really. It really covered the whole planet. Now, I can stand here for hours and tell you how I believe it started, but it doesn't matter. It's there. And the thing is that it really reached the whole world. And so the whole world is engaged in the same thing. And that's 2020. And then, of course, that was a race to somehow find solutions for this. Every country has its own. Every country wants to try something else. We all hear that uh, Britain originally wanted to have this natural herd immunity, and it didn't work. We all hear that Sweden had it until now, by the way, and as of yesterday, they are going into lockdowns as well. We all hear that come tr some countries had it better than others, and, but, but the point is, it's a race. That was a race. This whole year was a race. But as an Israeli, I must tell you, there were some good things in that race of 2020. And I have to bring it up because, you know, 
God is still on the throne. <laughs> and the Bible is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And every single promise here is still valid. There is nothing that caught God off guard with COVID. And so you would think, you would think that COVID will cause more tension and wars and more, and, and you know, it'll stop things from moving forward. But I, I want to show you some good things that happened, at least in Israel. First of all, in this falling apart region of the Middle East, you would think that Jews who lives in America or England, or whatever, they will not move to Israel. Well, guess what? Record number of Jews left America, the UK, and other places and moved to Israel. In fact, we have peace deals that we haven't had for the since Israel was born. <laughs> 73 years old country, never had that many peace deals. Four of them within less than four months. Wow. Uh, immigrants coming all the way from America, from France, from the UK, from the Ukraine, from India, and even Ethiopia. Plane loads of Jews. You, sh you should see them getting off the plane. They kiss the ground. And you want to tell them, COVID? No, no, doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Because if the Lord said that at the very end, he will bring back his people from the four corners of the world back to their land, COVID will not stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Four peace deals, did I say, in four months with countries that were in the front line to vow to destroy us. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, they may be, you know, some very, I would say, mm, not that uh, uh, famous in, 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 in their battle to, to fight Israel like Morocco, for example, but do you know that the Prime Minister of Morocco today is a Muslim Brotherhood guy? Did you know that as far as he's concerned, we should be dead? But his king told him, go and sign peace. And he's doing that. Not to mention that Saudi Arabia was funding for, for the longest time every effort to fight Israel on the, in the UN, of course, there were terrorism. But look, Saudi Arabia is the one that told the UAE and Bahrain, go ahead and sign peace. Listen, we're witnessing things that the Bible said are going to happen, and COVID did not stop them. But at the same time, see, there's some good things, as I said, but the, at the same time, the race for globalization and mind engineering is at its highest gear. I mean, I've never seen, look, I, I'm not that young, but I, ha, I can't remember a time in, in the history where so many people were told how to think, yes. what to say, what not to say, right. what not to see, what not to watch, as we see now. You would think that as we progress in time and technology yeah. is, is, of course, now available everywhere, I mean, in the middle of Africa today, yeah, be, you know, they have better way to pay payments than I in many places in America. They don't even use cash anymore. It's all by the phone. Chick, got it, got it. That's it. I mean, you would think with technology, nobody will ever be able to stop you from seeing things, knowing things, writing things, saying things. Oh, no. Oh, no. Listen, I'm being censored as we speak. Yeah. In the last 48 hours, 8,000 followers were taken from me wow. on Twitter. Why? I, I thought it's, they have something against me personally. I was offended. But then I realized every conservative account on Twitter is now being suppressed. Yeah. And then I saw yesterday, Mike Pompeo actually showed it. All the Democrat politicians gained thousands of thousands of followers. All the Republicans lost thousands of thousands wow. of followers. I mean, they're engineered. Mm. And you see, it was very well played. First of all, you create a crisis. It was, it was brilliant. Let's face it, it was brilliant. They created a crisis. And I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, trust me. I'm not. I, I run away from this. 
I run away from this as fast as I can because this is the worst thing that can happen. You put your trust in the wrong thing. But I also know how things happen and how things started. And to create a crisis that will hit the whole world, all you need is little tiny thing yeah. that will emerge out of an innocent lab, and that's it. And when you cause that, create a crisis, you cause panic. When you cause panic, it's the easiest way now to control you. Right. I don't need to tell you what your governor here is doing with this. <laughs> I mean, he's crazy, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, I hope I'm not getting this church in trouble, <laughs> but I'm leaving tomorrow, so I don't. <laughs> but uh, but you, you understand that, and then once you have all of these issues, and the panic is there, now we're forcing solutions on you. Right. Yes. And we force solutions on you, whether that makes sense or not, that doesn't matter. And if you have any opposition or any opposing view, you will be censored, because there's only one solution. And of course, they'll take the freedoms that we have. And if you want them back, you'll only get them conditionally if, if you do what we tell you you need to do. Yes. So look, it's 20. 20 and we entered into 2021 it's the biggest country in the world where I would say there is the uh, liberty that that's uh, supposed to sound everywhere it's the land of the free as at least you say and uh, you 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 just teach the whole world what democracy is your First Amendment is unlike anything you can find anywhere. This document of the U.S. Constitution is brilliant. Yes. And yet, here we are. It's a country where we see all of those things that we thought can never be taken from us being taken from us every day. And that's another race. But I want to take us all the way back to the race that matters. Amen. The race that matters. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And the Bible says, let us run. It doesn't say walk. Let us run with endurance, the race that is set before us, with endurance. In the Hebrew and the Greek, the word is with patience. Sablanut in Hebrew. We need to run with patience. And then he says, we need to run. That is a race that is set before us. It's there. You can turn your, you know, turn around and try to run away, but it's set before you. It's there. And you need to run. And then he says, looking unto who? Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You don't look at president. You don't look at military. You don't look at Twitter. You don't look at uh, the speaker of the house. You don't look at vice president as your savior. You don't look at anything but Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And then watch this. The way you need to run, watch this. He says, why do you need to run it in a way that you look at Jesus? Because he, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and had sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become what? Weary. Weary. And what? Discouraged. Discouraged. Where? In your soul. In your soul. This is almost a description of what we see today. Yeah. If I can ask you to be honest, mm -hmm. you would all probably tell me I am weary and discouraged yeah. in my soul. Yeah. Because this is true. This is a, if you run this race thinking about the things around you, you will always, always end up being weary and discouraged in your soul. And of course, it will affect your health also. It will affect 
you will hide yourself from believers, you will be always, and that's when you go into the rabbit hole and rabbit trail, whatever you call it, and then that's it. Listen, I'm telling you, looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, I have a question for you. From that text we just read, where is Jesus? Where is he right now? The Bible says he is right now, he's, he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Where is the throne of God? Jesus is up there. So as you run, when you run and your head needs to look at something, where should it look at? Where should it be positioned? Exactly, you see? Instead of looking to the right, and to, you know, one of the things I remember growing up, a uh, Jewish boy, uh, in, you know, going to synagogues, I will never forget. <laughs> I go to the synagogue on the Jewish holidays and all of them, you know, with their glasses and like that. And then they look around, they look around, and they look around, and then I, I thought to myself, it's a prayer, and they look everywhere but God. And I thought to myself, what is wrong with these people? You know, we can easily be just like that. Yeah. All day long, running our race, how? Looking at other people. And you know what? It's sad because I, I, have, I come from a nation, you, you would think that with all that God did for them, and it's still doing, they should be the most <laughs> fierce uh, believers in, 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 and then you, and you see that they just put their trust in the wrong thing. The Bible says about Israel, and, and I take you back to the Gospel of Matthew, the disciple came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables, to them, to the Jews that are non-believers, to those who do not follow you, to those who who may follow, and he, and he answered and he said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given, for whoever has to him more will be given, and he who, who have abundance, uh, and he will have abundance, but whoever does not have um, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parallel, because seeing they do not see, and hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. So wait a minute, he's, he's saying something that makes no sense. Wait a minute, they hear, but they don't hear. They see, but they do not see. Now watch this. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah, that's Isaiah chapter 6, by the way, is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive, for the heart of this people have grown what? It's a matter of the heart. And he said, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes, they have closed. Who has closed? They have closed their eyes. Lest, what? They should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they, what? Should understand with their hearts. And what happens when you really look at the m most important thing? What happened? So that... I should heal them. See, God says, look at me. Yes. Old Testament, Isaiah, the Lord God says to the people of Israel, stop looking around. Stop trusting your tradition. Yes. Stop trusting priests and stop trusting all that is going on and all the tradition. Look at me. Yes. Listen to my word. Yes. And if you do that, you'll be healed. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, Therefore, since we have such hope, we, 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 the church, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that children, the children of Israel, could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. If you look 
to take away that veil in any other way, you will fail. He says, look, the only way that veil can be taken is Christ. So any Jew who will not put his trust in the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the king of Israel. Yes. You know, remember, when, when, when he was held in the hands, what was it that, that he was named? He is what? A light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of his people Israel. Yes. Yes. Now watch this. He said, but their minds were blinded. And then he said, but even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Now watch this. Speaking about the Jews, look what he says. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And then I'm making now the transition from, from how God and Israel is having that into the church. And then he says, and where the, now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit is, uh, and, and, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that, of course, the church. And then, of course, he says, but we all, in 2 Corinthians 3, he says, we all, we, the believers, we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Look, if you try to run this race without understanding that you must know Him personally, believe in Him, put all your trust in Him, turn to Him. Who do you turn to when you hear all of these music? When you turn on your TV, which I don't recommend to do. <laughs> Who do you turn to? You, if you don't do that, you have to stand, you're going to be weary and heavy laden. Exactly. And it's going to be in your souls. And where, there is, where the Lord is, there is freedom. Yeah. It's a spirit. And so some believers, I know them, I've seen them all over the world. I try all over the world. It's the same thing. Ah. Why are you talking about the rapture as if it's tomorrow? <laughs> there is no rapture. That's one thing. By the way, most people who call themselves Christian on planet Earth don't believe in the rapture. Wow. Just so you know. <laughs> Just so you know. They don't think it's anything that is going to really happen. They, they, they look at all of these scriptures as, as allegoric and all of that. And then, of course, others are saying, why do you make people so excited about the rapture? <laughs> don't. I said, why? Because it's not going to happen that soon. <laughs> you see, I want to tell you something. God is never late. That's right. God is never late. Isn't that interesting that 2,000 years ago, Jesus was walking on earth. He gave the word of God in, in a way that no one has ever seen before. Miracles after miracles after miracles. 2,000 years ago, go through the book of Acts and see the reality of the disciples and the apostles. Quite amazing, isn't it? 2,000 years ago, they said, and 2,000 years ago, people already said, eh, not going to happen. 2 Peter 3, verses 3 to 9, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? How do you say, where is the promise of his coming? Because you follow, you're walking according to what? Your own lust. When you walk in your own lust, the last thing you want is for Jesus to come back. So you try to convince people it's not going to happen. So watch this. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willfully forget 
that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water but the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word what are what are reserved for what for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men he says but beloved he says look they say what they say but i want to tell you something because of the word of god this earth is still intact Amen. by the way this is a lot of believers don't understand that's what is the the the, the whole essence of being or having the restrainer in you Restrainer. He's not only restraining Satan from having the Antichrist revealed. He's restraining the judgment of God from falling upon you. Right. You look, when Jonah went to Nineveh and he spoke eight words, and the whole city and the king, all of them repented, the Bible says that God withheld the judgment. Yes. And he said, Beloved, don't forget this one thing. For the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. That's for you. If you are if you're if you are a Calvinist, these this verse is not for you. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that what? All should come to repentance. Look, Habakkuk says, for the vision is yet for in what? There is an appointed time. God is not asking, it's not, there's no survey. When do you want me to come? <laughs> Fill up the survey. He's not having some poll. How do you want me to come? There is already an appointed time. He says, but at the end it will speak. And it will not lie. And then, though, it tarries in your own hearts. He says, wait for it, because it will what? Surely come. It will not tarry. In reality, it's not going to tarry. But in your heart, oh, it tarries. Where is it? Should have been here already. <laughs> and so, until he comes, we have been given instructions how to run this race. Yeah. How to run this race. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24 to 26. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? Have you ever seen somebody that walked into the race uh, track and he is just walking? <laughs> no, they all run. But look what he says. But one receives the prize. And then he says, run in such a way don't just be a participant. Mm. So run in order to win the prize. Yeah. But then he says, and by the way, that's not a prize like the ones that everybody gets here on earth, he says. He says, everyone who competes for a prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain what? A perishable crown. But we, for an imperishable crown crown he says Amen. and therefore he says Paul writing to the church in Corinth Corinth is one of the largest excuse me for my pr French brothels in the world of those days yeah. Corinth horrible place a place that served people that came from both sides of the Greek Isle all the way to a place that has a big big uh, temple for Aphrodite, and there were some women uh, that were like prophetesses that were basically prostitutes. And, and people thought, oh, I come to worship. <laughs> Suddenly, every, all the men became worshipers. <laughs> and you know, they really at some point thought it is an act of worship, and uh, Paul had to tell them, you can't do this and this. This is not going to work. And then watch this. He says to them, I run 
Thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air. You know what it means? It means that 2,000 years ago, there was a Jewish guy who was standing in front of the most sinful city on planet Earth, and he's telling all of them, I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. Says he, he taught me everything I know. He says, when I run, I run with certainty. Yes, I'm not, it's not, there's no darkness that I beat in the air. I don't know where it is. I don't know what, to, no, no, no. I ha I'm the light of the world. <laughs> yeah. He is the light of the world. Then he said to me, you're the light of the world. Everything is in the light. I know where I run. Amen. I know how I run. I know that I'm not beating as one beats the air, he says. Philippians 3 says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected. How many of you are perfect people? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I thought there were, we have some. <laughs> Paul says, not that I am already perfected. Paul is in the middle. In Philippians, he's still in the middle of the race. He's not yet in Timothy. Now watch this. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press forward the goal for the price of the what? Everybody, remember when you run, how do you run? Where is your head? Exactly. That, you, you understand, the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Isaiah says in chapter 40, For those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And look what he says. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then he tells us also how not to run. <laughs> Now, I understand how we need to run. We need to show up, and we need to run as winners to get the prize with the upward calling. But how not to run, he says, to the Galatians that started well and then go started flirting back with the law of Moses, thinking that that will save them. He says, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempted to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. And then he says, you ran well, but who hindered you from obeying the truth? Which means... That you can start running, you can run well, but at the moment you take your head from Jesus and he's no longer enough, and now you need to fulfill the law and to keep the Sabbath and to do this and to do that, and then it's Jesus plus, you have become what? Estranged from Christ. And you cannot run that race. Because what, what happened when you're estranged from Christ? You're running the wrong direction. Life as a race. You know, <laughs> you can't run the race if you're not alive. Hello? <laughs> How many of you think that those who are already asleep in Christ are running now? They're not running. <laughs> what, what do we do when we, when we bury them? How do we call it? They were put to what? Rest. Rest. Now we run the race that is set before us. Yes. Second Timothy for God has not given us, what, a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Can I see smiles on your faces this morning? <laughs> you know, because I'm telling you, the next few days will be a very bumpy ride. Yeah. And you need, to, you need to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. I, 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 do <laughs> I don't want to share with you what I know. But I know that if you don't put your, your trust in Jesus, you will be filled with what? Fear. And there will be no love in you and no sound mind in you. 
how you, for God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but a pow, of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ he said who has who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher an apostle and a teacher for the Gentiles for this reason I also suffer these things nevertheless I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able. Now watch this. He is what? He is able to keep what I have committed to him. Ah, watch this. You don't run this race. Okay, I'm running the race. And then you make it to the finish line. You die. Give me my medals, please. No, Paul is already saying, look, whatever you did, and by the way, before the beam is seat, everything that counts is your faithfulness, nothing else. Yeah. Okay, faithfulness. Whatever God gave you to do, did you do it with faithfulness? Yeah. Okay, even if you, you, I only shared the gospel and people got saved well, maybe three times in my life. Okay, but did you do it with faithfulness? Yeah. Okay, now watch this. But he says, he will keep those things to that day. That day. You see, death is not, it, death is just one finish line for those who die. Those who fall asleep in Christ, what happens? The Bible says to be absent from your body is to what? Be present with the Lord. Yeah. To be present with, with the Lord means you made it to the finish line. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hello? If you run and Jesus is the target and you're now with him, that's it. He's not going to stand in heaven and you run or a running walk. No, you, you made it. But Paul himself, reaching the end of his life, maybe days before he died, wrote in 2 Timothy, he says, this is the first time, I love Paul. This is the first time Paul is admitting that his race is coming to an end. Look what he says. I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. Can you say that? No? You're, you're, are you about to die in a few seconds? No. But he was. He was. And he said, my departure is at hand. I have fought. He's not fighting anymore. That's it. He's now saying, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the first time he says he's been teaching us all throughout the, 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 the epistles how to run. And he says, I'm running. I know where I'm running. I know how I'm running. And finally, hours, days, I don't know, before he died, I finished the race. Amen. I've kept my faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, said so the Lord is a righteous God. Don't look for righteous gods here. Amen. Honestly, if one thing I identified that happened to you in the, com in the last elections, somebody figured that your judicial system is compromised so much that anything he will do, he can do it. And Jesus is a righteous judge. He will give it to me. That crown of righteousness, he will give it to me when? On that day. That day is not tomorrow for him. He said that day not only to me, he said, but also to all who what? Have loved his? Yeah. Yeah. So Paul is basically saying, 
look, if you live your life with the expecta expectation to be taken, yeah. with the love of his appearing, appearing in the Greek is not coming to stay. Mm -hmm. That's the second coming. That's a different story. Right. Appearing is when he appears for us. Mm -hmm. Those who are waiting, eagerly waiting for his appearing, they will be taken, obviously. And he says, that is the day when we're all standing, we're being given the crowns and the rewards. That's the day that I will receive my crowns. That is that day. But know this, he says, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Look, if you have no problem killing the baby in your womb, you love yourself. And then he says, lovers of money. Two-thirds of your politicians in D.C. are lovers of money. Yeah. Everything that they're being, have been compromised by is mostly connected to money. Make no mistake, when I took off from D.C. yesterday, I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. I felt the most demonic presence ever in that place. And... And, and people will be lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, un unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I mean, it's crazy. First Timothy 4, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, in the last days, some will depart from faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. It's going to be from outside the church. It's going to be from inside the church. It's just the, I would call apostasia. Yes. Yeah. Look at this picture on, on I think it was on uh, Instagram, of uh, Netflix. Praise Satan. This is Netflix. Look, they had a hundred, when I checked it, it had 137, 474 likes. Wow. That's just to promote their uh, new series. Wow. Look at those two images. And this is here, by the way. It's in California. Yeah. Keep God out of California with a big smile. No knee will bow. Wow. No knee will bow. <laughs> Look. They know there is a God because they're using a verse and then reverse it. Yeah. Right. Right. Did you know that at any given moment, an estimate of 40.3 million people are being victimized in situations of trafficking and exploitation worldwide? 25% of them are children. 10 million children in every given day are sex slaves wow. all around the world. The only president in the history that did something about it is the one that is still in power. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Portland protesters burn Bibles, American flags outside federal courthouse. And if that's not enough, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at what happened in California just a few weeks ago. Federal court backs California gov Governor Newsom orders keeping churches closed, but at the same time, yeah. strip clubs can stay open despite COVID shutdowns and California County judge rules. If that's not enough, take a look. U.S. drug overdose deaths hit a record high. Look, this, not just this country. I'm giving you just examples from this country, but it's all over the world. All over the world. Take a look at these three images. My abortion was fabulous. Thanks. The other one, I do not regret my abortion. The other one, make abortion great again. This is in this country. So, what Paul warned Timothy that the last days are going to look like, they're here. So, we really can see the finish line. We see the finish line. Hebrews 10 says, 
Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. You see, they want to steal your hope. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. No matter who is your president on January 20th, Jesus is on the throne. There is a hope for you if you run the race, stay on course, looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. He says, let us hold fast the confession for he who promised is faithful, he said. And let us consider one another in order to stir up what? Love. Not division, love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much as the more as what? You see the day approaching. He didn't say, you feel it's about to come. <laughs> so much the more as you pray it might one day come. He says, there is going to come a generation that will see with his very eyes the day approaching. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for what? The blessed hope and glorious what? Appearing. Remember we said appearing is when he appears in the, in the cloud? Yeah. The glorious appearing of our go great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. And look, how do you know that the Holy Spirit works in you? How do you know that you are his own special people? How? Zealous. When you are zealous for good works. Mm -hmm. right. Arr, I want to kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> But until then, and it's around the corner, and we see the finish line. Until then, let's sit and have a pity party. Yeah. No. no. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Yeah. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. In other words, we live in a world where the lawlessness is already at work. That mystery is already at work. But he will do so until that restrainer is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. All these that had those signs, you know what's going to happen? The Bible says, those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had what? Pleasure in unrighteousness. We need to be those who are working zealous for good things. They take pleasure in unrighteousness. A promise to the faithful, revelation to the church of Philadelphia, because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly, he said. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. And of course, if you die in the next two seconds, you're with Jesus. You finish the race, okay? 
But there is another way to finish the race. You don't need to die. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corrupt, corruption inherit cor incorruption. The old I tell you is a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Look at yourself. Some of you are not going to die. But we shall all be changed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We shall all be changed. Yes. Take your two fingers, pinch yourself right now. <laughs> See this? Look, I don't care how you feel. You're a tent, you're not a building. That's what the Bible says. This is a tent, not a building. Put your picture from 15, 20 years ago next to you, you're dying. <laughs> he says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we, the dead will be raised, and we, say we, we shall be changed. Amen. For this corruptible must, not, must, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought the past the saying, as it is written, death swallowed, of course, um, uh, up in victory. And, of course, what it is from Isaiah chapter 25, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, he says. And I want to remind you, the last, this is it, remind you that when you run the race with looking at Jesus, just what he said to the Thessalonians, and God, they got him all wrong. <laughs> they got him all wrong. He told them about the rapture. Yeah! And then two people died in the church. And they write him a letter. Ah, you were wrong. <laughs> Somebody died. Ah, you were wrong. We think we, we've missed the rapture. Ah, we think we are in the tribulation. He had to write the second letter to the Thessalonians to correct them. They sold everything. They quit their jobs. They thought, that's it. He says, this way... I say to you by the word of the Lord, Paul always made sure that if there is something comes from, from himself, he will say, this is not from the Lord, this I say. But if something comes from the Lord, he says, this is, I say by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. He says, don't weep over those who died in Christ. Why? Because for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Amen. He says, why are you so sad? They'll be first. And then he said, They'll, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And then he says, therefore comfort one another with these words. So again, what is the finish line? Being in the presence of Jesus. Amen. And I want you to remember the next few days will be a very bumpy ride for this whole country. But I want you to know he who promised is faithful. Amen. I want you to know that when you run your race you run it looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And I want you to know that no one ever can know the timing of the rapture, but we know the day, we know the hour, we know the, excuse me, the, uh, uh, the times and the seasons. And we've all can, you know, we all can agree this, we are in the last days. And the last days, and I want you as Americans to know that these are going to be very testing days. They will test your faith. They will test your faith. If, and, and remember, the minute you take your eyes from Jesus, your soul is going to be weary and troubled. Don't do that. I want you to remember, 
than in these last days and in the days to come for your, for, for your wonderful country. Everybody's going to look at you. Because you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You're the ones that should make a difference. You're the one that knows the answer. You're the one that heard the gospel. You're the one that lived your faith. If you are panicky, if you are unstable in your faith, if you are weary and troubled, what, the non what will the non-believer say? They're going to look at you. And I want to remind you, that these dark days are the best days for the church to shine its light. Yes. And so yes. let's finish the race. We've, we're reaching the finish line. We know where it is. We are seeing the day approaching. And remember these things in the next few days. Father, I thank you so much that Jesus promised us that he's soon coming. He's coming quickly, he said. Right. Father, I thank you that uh, we are reaching the finish line. I thank you that we can see the day approaching. I thank you, Father, that he who promised is faithful. And in the coming days, Father, as those two trains are riding so fast at each other, and as collision is inevitable, Father, may your church make a big difference. May all of us stay steadfast, strong, immovable, and be zealous of good works. We thank you for your promises. We bless your name today from here, from Costa Mesa, California. We are saying we love you, we worship you, and we welcome you to come and take us out of here any minute. We do not belong to this world. We are citizens of the heavenlies. We thank you and we bless you. And if there's anyone here today, as we have our eyes closed and our heads bowed down, if there's anyone here today that does not know Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior, you really don't want to leave this place today. If you're watching online or if you're here, you do not want to leave without knowing that you are saved. By the way, anyone who is saved, the Bible says, you know that you have eternal life. There is no doubt that should be in you unless you never truly, fully committed your life to Him. We are in the last phase of this race. How foolish it will be to run so well and then to be estranged from Christ. So I pray, Father, that if there is anyone here that doesn't know you personally, that never really truly gave his life to you, that maybe is still fighting his own fights, and he's punching in the air because obviously he cannot see where he's going. Father, today, may today be a day of salvation. May he repent, confess, trust you, invite you into his heart, and see a wonderful way of the Holy Spirit working in him. We thank you, Father, for all those people that are doing that right now. We bless your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.